It's the magic of the musicals with me, Alex Belfield, and we're here with two massive stars from probably my favourite production ever, Kizzy Simmons. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? And nice to see you again. Thank you so much. It's been about five years, I think. Has it? Aren't you bored stiff doing this by now? (laughs) You can never be bored during The Lion King. And Wallace Smith, how are you? Wonderful. How are you? I'm really good, thank you, because I just saw The Lion King this afternoon, and I tell you why I keep coming back to this show, and I've probably seen it ten times in the West End and twenty times here with various casts, is it is completely magical. And even after 10 years, it doesn't seem to age or look old technology wise or the songs. Well, that's why they call it magic. But, you know, it's just an awesome thing to even come and view because of the animals, the puppetry, the songs. Um, It's just very creative. Having said that, doing it eight times a week for how many years now? I've been doing the show for six years. How come you're not insane? (laughs) Well, you know, it's just life. I view it as anything else, you know, um... It's great to have employment, living in New York City, doing what you do, being on Broadway. That's a big honor in of itself. And when you do the show, if you're in the moment, it's never the same. Yeah. And when you're in the biggest show, probably in the world, in terms of success and the number of people have seen it, where do you go from there? There's no point leaving the best show, really, is there? <laughs> well, you know, you just take opportunities as they come along. I don't know about you, because this is your debut here on Broadway. It must be interesting as an actor going into any show. Um, there must be a lot of nerves when you're opening a show, because the critics could hate it and it closes within three minutes. When you come into a show like this, there's no chance it's going to close, because people are still packing it out every night. It must be nice to have a gig where you can just relax and enjoy it. Absolutely. You know, it's it's one of the shows, one of the unique shows on Broadway where, uh, you know, uh, different shows have, you know, X amount of life. But this this show seems to just keep going and going and going. And I mean, you know, for, for a very good cause, because of the... The, the wonderful things in the show, the music, the uh, the productions all across the world. It just has a legacy of being a top notch show. So there is a lot of security there, and and you know you can really relax into the part. Now let's talk about the show itself. You must be exhausted in the first half because you never stop working, do you? <laughs> well, you know, big Nala. <laughs> she doesn't appear until the second act, so I I do have like at least twenty minutes to just if I need to warm up, if I need to eat, whatever I need to do. That's my time. And then about twenty twenty five minutes into the show, I go into makeup, and the makeup process is about is about forty five minutes. The interesting thing about this show, there isn't just one 11 o'clock number, there's about four or five. And I love that thing when one member of the audience turns around, we're not going to give it away, um, and then the rest follow, and then you hear that intake of breath. What is that like from your perspective on stage? Well, you know, it's, it's, I think every night that we, that we do the show, it's really a, a lot more about the audience than it is about us a lot of times because the show is such a visual spectacle. So, you know, every, every night that we get to do the show, it's always fresh. It's always new. Uh, no matter how we feel, uh, we know that we're taking them for a ride, you know. So it's, uh, it's one of those things where, you know, you get a lot of energy from what mm-hmm. they give to you, mm-hmm. you know. So it's, it's terrific. Yeah. And it's absolutely amazing because this show just doesn't reach one type of people, one yeah. group of people. I mean, that's why it has so much success and it's able to be worldwide because everybody, whether you are a child, middle age, elderly, you know, everyone can see and take something from the show and just thoroughly enjoy it. That's why it is magical. If people haven't seen the Disney cartoon, they should be ashamed of themselves, firstly, (laughs) because it's old enough now that they should have seen it. It really is a story about family and unity uh, and love, which are all the greatest stories, let's face it, in the world. It happens to then be set as uh, lions in the Maasai Mara. How the technical people have worked out how to turn you into who you're meant to be um, is remarkable, and it still is remarkable and completely unique. There's nothing like it anywhere else in the world, is there? No, there's not. Uh, I've never done a show uh, that has been this extensive on so many different levels and, I, and I've said this to people before if you can do The Lion King you can do any show because I mean <laughs> it takes you uh, through so many different you know so many different things from the makeup from the costumes uh, from being on stage I mean it is absolutely the top notch thing to be a part of in theater I mean Broadway across the world it's, it's to me it's, it's the best thing to be a part of and you know what else? It's just uh, as a matter of what's required of us as actors. Um, the First of all, you need to be physically fit. Uh, secondly, depending upon which role you have and what you do, you know, just in general, you need to be able to sing, you need to look the part, mm-hmm. um, and you need to be able to have longevity so you can do the role 
either year after year or month after month, however long you decide to stay. But most importantly with the show is the spirit that's captured. And, you know, that was one of Julie Taymor's big thing she was she always talks about the spirit and the spirit of the show and where it's coming from and how the story is told you must be unique on broadway or in the west end or anywhere in the world there can't be many people have had the same role for six years are you in some kind of record book no no we have um a couple of cast members here pumba and timon they've been in the show for 10 years and i'm sure there are so many broadway legends that did shows for yeah. years and years and years. So six yeah. years, I mean, hey, congratulations, Kissy Simmons, <laughs> but that's nothing compared to what other people have done. What is that feeling like where you're stud center stage and you've got that pin focus just on you and the orchestra's relatively quiet and if you cock up, we're going to hear it? <laughs> it's exhilarating. I tell you, I mean, I think that's the thing that has over these last uh, years, a couple of years I've done this show, it keeps me coming back because you can never really top yourself. Um, I don't know any other uh, show where you can stand you have an opportunity to stand before people and the focus is right there on you and you have the ability to take them where you want to go you know um, it's it's exhilarating it's something that I mean you're not going to find by doing TV or doing film I mean Broadway is an experience in and all of itself and you cannot replace it you know you can't substitute it for anything so it's terrific it's just live yeah we're here today with uh, Wallace Smith and Kissy Simmons, the two big stars of The Lion King, which is probably the world's favourite musical because the kids just love it. You come on right at the end of the first half and then take over for the second half. And I noticed ladies looking at you with a certain uh, admiration that they perhaps weren't considered in the first half. <laughs> well, that's probably because Simba is grown up now and uh, all of the things he's been eating in the jungle has made him have this uh, fabulous physique. So Muscles. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's probably what they're looking at, looking at uh, all the muscles and stuff on Simba. Do you think I could ever play Simba? I mean, looking at me sat here now, clinically obese, ginger hair, deeply unattractive. It's not going to happen, is it? N man, never say never. I, I say anything is possible. Put your mind to it. Put your body to it. You can do it. But I will say it all depends on if you can handle Nala. <laughs> and that's the great thing about this show, because as I say, it's a love story. And uh, and the love story begins in the first half with the kids, and then it really turns into proper ooh, ooh love story in the second half. Um, and you get to really do the best role, because you're the sexy one that everybody likes right from the beginning um, and, and again you get the numbers that are just so powerful how do you cope on those matinees or the days when it's snowing outside and your train's late and you're feeling in a bad mood and you've still got to turn it on literally well you know it's like once you get on stage performing is what I love to do so once I'm on stage it's like this is why I live I'm, I have this, you know, this great opportunity to be out portraying this wonderful character, and it's like it's once I'm on stage, it's it's there. And there's never an element of is there anything else I could do elsewhere on Broadway? <laughs> oh well, you mean as far as is there another show that I could possibly be in one day? I think you know, just being human, there's always that. I wonder what if if. It, will I be in another Broadway show? Of course, that crosses my mind because, you know, on your resume, you want to have this list of whatever so you can show other people that this is what I have done. Let's talk about the transatlantic thing. Would you like to take your roles to London? You know, I wouldn't. I, would, I definitely wouldn't mind. I think that the best experience is to be in tons of different environments. I know I got a chance to do both national tours of Lion King, and you know, although it's the United States, still, it's you get to do the East Coast, the West Coast, and who wouldn't want to go overseas? You know, to experience that and to experience the culture, which is totally different, you know, from here in the USA. So, absolutely. Mm -hmm. For you, Kiss. I think it'd be a great opportunity, um, especially if it's in a foreign land and, you know, it gives you the opportunity to pick up a different language or enhance that language. Maybe you can become fluent. Um, I would like, you know, the opportunity to visit London and maybe even work there. So I would knock it down. The problem is you're too busy doing eight shows a week here. You haven't yeah. time to travel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was lucky yeah. enough to do a breakfast show in Kenya for nearly nine months and therefore 
travelled around the Maasai Mara and got to know the animals that are portrayed in this musical and it's very touching on that level there's lots of clever things in this and there's also a lot of humour uh, there's characters like Rafiki which means friend in Swahili there's lots of clever levels to this depending on whether you just want to come, come and see the show and turn your brain off or whether you actually want to go deeper than that there's lots of jokes some of them quite mucky as well aren't they mm. a lot of people really don't know that it's an actual language when they come see the show you know because they'll ask well, you know, is she really saying anything, Rafiki? I mean, does it mean anything, or is she just speaking gib- gibberish? And, you know, lots of times we're, we have to explain that it is actual Zulu or whatever language she's speaking in that particular point. Have you been to Kenya? I have to ask this question. Have you been over? No, I have not. I've always wanted to. Uh, but, you know, that's one that's one of my dreams is to go back, you know, to to Africa and to see, you know, where, especially for this show. If I had an opportunity to go to Africa while doing this show, it would just enhance so much of the storytelling because we are telling a story that takes place in a real place, in a real environment. You know, so absolutely. You must be hating me today because I asked for this interview in between the two shows, which is your busiest day of the week. There's two of them. Um, How do you psych yourself up to get on stage for the first show knowing that you've got to do exactly the same thing just a few hours later? I've always been fascinated by that because with my job, if I did two shows a day, they'd be completely different. You have to do exactly the same thing. It's incredible discipline, isn't it? Yeah, I would say that it is. But, you know, again, I will say it's just like anything else. You know, most people have a nine to five job and they have to be there. So you do what you have to do. And the thrill of seeing your name on the billboards and seeing the Lion King across everywhere. No, it's a dream come true. I mean, when I had my first audition for the Lion King when I was 18, that was like back in 98. I would have never thought then that I would be in New York City and be on a stage with so many wonderful people and be in a community that is so diverse and so filled with depth. So, it, you know, anytime you get a chance to, to look at you know yourself in the environment that you in that you're in like this it definitely takes you back you know every time takes you back i'm going to ask you a larry king style question very finally why you do you wonder why you were the one to be picked because there must be a million people queuing to do each of your roles um it's a role that you do brilliantly but there's always somebody waiting to take your place isn't there you know alex when i first um got the role of nala on broadway i came to new york for the first time from florida And um, I knew that I was coming to New York to land a role. I didn't know exactly what it would be, but I was was just so ready to make that next step. Um, I had been performing for a while, and so I was just ready to go. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, I, I got the role. And of course I was shocked and I was surprised and I was happy and all that stuff, but you know, when you feel it in the inside, and that's another spirit thing again. It's like when you feel it in the inside, it's like you know that you got this because you did what it take or took to get the role and now that you have the role you need to continue to do what it takes to keep it there was a part today where I, I noticed elements of the Nina Simone in your performance, the, the, a unique voice that you don't hear very often. Mm. It seems to me on Broadway, there's so many people who don't stick out. Yeah. And that always puts people like you in good stead because you do. Congratulations on that. Well, thank mm. you so much. Um, I have no idea what I look like. <laughs> I wish I could see myself sometimes. I'm like, can we just video it so maybe I can assess what I'm doing? You know, you do get notes and we have a great mm-hmm. resident director and they maintain the show well, but you individually cannot see what you're doing and you wish that you could just for your for, for yourself. But thank you. I appreciate that. That's where you and me differ, you see. I'm glad I can't see myself. That's why I do radio. <laughs> um, and for you, that, that performance, why you? Because there's a million guys your age trying to go for roles like this, aren't there? Absolutely. I mean, I just feel blessed and humbled. I, I have no idea. I could just say that, you know, it was, you know, my journey didn't start, you know, I didn't just walk in and, and you know, land the part. I had to audition maybe three or four times. And every time I came in, you know, it was something to make me better, you know, whether, hey, take voice lessons or, hey, work out more, you know. And I had a choice to either step up to that challenge and and hopefully one day get the part or step up to that challenge and say, well, I'll have a better voice or a better looking physique. But, you know, it all paid off. And so I think, you know, for anybody, it's just about, you know, if it's your time, you know, if it's your time, it's your time and nobody can can do it while it's your time. And then when it's not, you know, you can look back at it, you know, or when it's over, you can look back at it and say, you know, I did that and this was my journey and it makes it all the more special. And one day I could be Simba. One day you can. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. (laughs) 
<laughs> Guys, you just heard your call. We've got to go and let you get on with the second show of your day. Thank you so much for sparing the time to talk to me. It'll be the last thing you want to do in between shows. Uh, but Wallace Smith and Kissy Simmons, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Alex. Thank you.